What is up, survivors? Today's mod review is going to be the Pick It Up mod. This is one that one of our community members suggested from one of the previous videos, and I figured it's about time I started cranking out on that long list of other mods to talk about. This is a huge QOL mod, which is going to help out a lot in PvE building, even PvP, honestly. I think this kind of applies to everything. Um, there's a lot of stuff to go over, and there's even some stuff that I don't have to go over, but we'll uh, we'll leave a link to the description in the video, and we're going to go over pretty much everything. Not everything, but pretty much everything. Um, let's start with this back corner. So basically what this is is really just a QOL mod, and when we talk about that, obviously the mod is called Pick It Up, but while everything in here is capable of being picked up there's a lot of other cool stuff so so let's start back here with the storage cabinet so um all these tags that have the pick it up version you'll see that piu in front of it that's what it's for uh the storage cabinet is just a 95 slot storage cabinet so it's a little bit bigger and then when you have an actual tier one large storage box which is 150 you have a tier two large storage box which is 300 and then the tier four goes or the tier three goes to 450. Um, the material looks a little bit different. I believe you can still color these things, um, mainly because this purple is kind of bleed your eyes purple. I don't know how I feel about it. And all of these things do snap to each other. So if they're the same likeness, they'll snap to one another, um, even above on top, as well as like to either side or front and back. So you have all the different snap points so you can get them all organized in a very clean line. The smaller storage cabinet. So this one looks like the, the normal storage box, but it's 35 slots. Going over, you have a tier one that's 50. You have the tier two that's 70. And then the tier three that's 100. Um, kind of looks like the same material kind of matches everything and as you can see they snap to each other pretty perfectly So you can get them all lined up exactly how you want to other storage solutions would be the bookshelf here You have a tier 2 bookshelf that has a 300 slot and then a tier 3 bookshelf Which is a 600 slot. Do you have two different grinders? We have the industrial grinder, but then we also have the OG industrial grinder So um, the things to note with the industrial grinders is that a they're a lot smaller than the current industrial grinder Obviously, we can pick them up because everything is able to be picked up, but these grinders do do some cool things. One, they're more efficient when you grind things down. So if you do grind it down, it's going to give you the full resources back, but you can also craft quite a bit of resources on here that would otherwise be really hard to get. For instance, you can get black pearls from just using silica pearls. You can get oil. You can turn organic polymer into polymer, which is super nice. And then there's a slew load of other items in here that you can create. Um, just by having other things available. So super, super, super useful. And they're quiet. So they're more efficient on gas. So you just run them on gas or they'll run on electricity. They're just a lot smaller and a lot quieter. As we can see. And they look awesome. Like the, this is obviously just a shrunken industrial grinder, but the, uh, the OG industrial grinder is pretty cool too. All right. So, um, and I think these are both 650 on the storage. Yeah. So they got a huge slot update too. Coming down this way, we'll go this way and kind of work our way all the way around. So we have the standard vault, which you can pick up. That's a 700 slot vault. And then we have these other vaults that are the tier two, uh, the tier one, two, and three that hold more. And they're a lot smaller, obviously. So we have the tier one that holds 300, tier two that holds five, tier three that holds 800. And again, you can stack these guys, snap them to either front, back, up, down, left, right, however you want to snap them, they'll snap to each other. Uh, we have a refrigerator that's just a 120 slot refrigerator and it does the spoil timer is increased on these so it's even better than a normal refrigerator as far as the spoil time goes piu preserving bins work the same way so these guys will preserve things longer and they'll make jerky faster and as always you can pick them up slot size is 50 on the regular preserving bin then go over to the tech one you have a 350 slot and the spoil timer is even higher with these guys um, now with the tech and uh, with well, the higher end crafting stations, it will tell you that you need a tech power or fusion fuel to preserve these things or to make them work in general. We'll talk about how to make that fusion fuel a little bit later on. Up top here, you have a green spoil bin. Basically what this does is uh, creates um, meat into spoiled meat and then it increases the spoil timer of the spoiled meat on top of it. So you can turn raw meat into spoiled meat really quickly and it preserves it for a really long time. Cold fusion storage is an upgraded fridge basically. Um, this will increase the, the storage, it'll increase the, the spoil time exponentially. Um, if we look at like the normal spoil time when it's off, you look at that like 40, what is that, 40 minutes? Yep, for like one of these uh, blood packs. And if I activate it, we now have 140 days. So having this thing activated is going to uh, preserve your things for quite a long time. Over to the vessel, the vessel is just a higher, it has a higher slot size and it preserves the salt for even longer. Um, and obviously you can pick it up. Coming over to the smithy, any of the PIU stuff that you would normally craft out of a smithy, you would craft it on the PIU smithy instead of on another smithy. 
300 slot, and then obviously you can pick this guy up and down. Cool thing about some of these crafting stations to note is that in here, if you're creating something that's mass produced like weapons or, or like ammunition or resources, you can actually bulk craft these instead of just crafting one independently over and over again. So it allows you to queue up a lot more. You can craft all this stuff and just walk away. It's so much easier. The Ingram crafting table, you can actually transfer things into Ingrams, which seems to be the point of like, I guess if you were in a tribe and you were limited as far as your Ingram points, you couldn't unlock everything. This would keep players, you could, you could kind of mix and match these for other players so that way they would have the stuff to make it even though they didn't have the Ingram unlocked. I think that's the point of this table. Coming over here, the PIU Kibbles table is probably one of my favorite things in this mod. Uh, you can actually create all your kibble here, but then you can create all of the classic kibbles, the original kibbles in here. You can craft um, some other things like veggie cake. You can craft rare flowers and rare mushrooms out of here. You can craft um, like packs of things like packs of kibble. You can also just craft regular dinosaur eggs. You have the current version of the kibble. That's all on here as well. But one of the awesome things about this is probably what I like the best is you can just craft regular eggs just with metal. You can just craft regular eggs. They're not going to be fertilized eggs, but they'll be eggs that you can use to make kibble. So with this table, gone are the days of taming a bunch of animals that you really didn't want just to get the eggs to make the kibble. You don't have to do that here. Super useful. Now, obviously, in situations where you would need the fertilized egg, you still need that. But for regular dinosaur eggs, really cool. So if you want the kibble farm, but you don't necessarily want to tame all the critters, this is an easy solution. Coming over, this is probably another one of my favorite ones, the PIU DLC table. This table allows you to craft anything from the current DLCs, right? So let's say you're on a map that doesn't have the Genesis stuff, but you have like Genesis creature spawning. Well, there you go. Now you can craft all the Genesis stuff. Same thing from SE, and you can even get the resources in here too and uh, make all that stuff too, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can make generic resource, make these resources with the generic stuff so that you could use this uh, table essentially on any map and have access to all of the DLC stuff, which is pretty cool. Coming over to the beer barrel, bigger slot makes beer faster. That's pretty much it. Uh, the air conditioner is quieter, significantly quieter. As you can see, it's a little bit smaller. Well, no, it's about the same size, but it's really quieter and it's more efficient, really. Um, again, you can still pick these guys up. The ERM table is an interesting one. This essentially lets you create bulks of things to make transportation and weight a little bit easier as well as storage. So basically what you can do is turn and let's go into uh, the easy mover. So like for instance, this guy, so you, but basically you can take like 25 absorbent subtract and put it in a stack of in and of itself and then stack those on top of each other. And then what this allows you to do is keep the same weight as if it was just one. So you can have mass amounts of resources to either move or stuff away somewhere and the weight is still down. So this makes um, carrying a lot of stuff, transportation and uh, uh, storage a lot easier. You can stack a lot of these things on top of each other, basically just kind of exponentially increasing the stacking size. Uh, we have two different grills over here. We have the industrial grill and then we have the tech grill, both of which are a lot smaller. Obviously you can pick them up, but what they do is uh, that what they have is an increased slot size and then they cook things a lot faster and in bulk. The tech grill has uh, the same slot size, but it just cooks things even faster is essentially what you're getting out of it. We have the Indie Forge and then the Tech Forge. As far as what they do, it's pretty much the same. The Tech Forge just does it faster um, and it has a bigger slot size. So we have a 450 slot size on the Tech Forge and then we have 250 on the regular Forge and then 20 on the regular Refining Forge. These PIUs will craft things faster already plus the size like these guys are downscaled in size so much like gone are the days of trying to make a giant tower around your indie forge to hide it you don't need to do that uh, you can easily have all these crafting stations inside a smaller base which is really nice uh, you still use gasoline same deal or even electricity to power these guys and like i said they just burn things down a lot quicker and the tech forge does it even faster Coming over here to the generator, we have the regular generator and the tech generator. Uh, basically, these guys are going to be, firstly, they're going to be a lot more quiet, and the, the range of the tech generator is going to be exponentially higher than normal, and they don't go through fuel nearly as quickly. That's pretty much it with the generators. Let's kind of go over here. This is an interesting one. It kind of looks like a gas collector, but it's not. This is an element extractor that you would normally need, like some mods like S Plus and Superstructures, you need like an element catalyzer or something and you put it in liquid element like on aberration and something like that to create element not this guy you just let it sit there and run and it will gradually create element over time this mm, i mean i think on maps where it's not easy to get element something like this is very useful for people um for tribes so i like that and it doesn't seem like it produces it that quickly like you would need a giant farm of these to really just farm element the right way uh to get enough of it but an easy solution for element nonetheless 
uh, coming over a lot of these things that we're going to talk about. Well, really just the beds. Really the only thing that you're getting out of it is the option to pick it up. Uh, but the mortar and pestle does the same thing like we talked about with the bullets from like the smithy, but it does with resources. You can create like bulk versions of these instead of just creating one cementing paste that queues up 20, allowing you to just queue up a lot more between uh, between resource gathering and, and creation. Uh, the campfire does kind of like what the grill does with the, with this with the idea that it just has a couple more slots and that it just cooks things a lot faster so you don't have to worry about that fertilizer bin this is a kind of a cool one this is a increase to 500 slots and it creates it it creates the fertilizer faster so you have a 500 slot thing on this guy and it creates a fertilizer faster you might not need a dung beetle with something like this on your hands uh, the beds are all pretty much the same with the exception that they'll snap to each other and that they can be picked up from what I can tell, I don't really see anything other different than that, but you do have the option to snap them together really easily. And like I said, you could just pick them up whenever you want. So the troughs, the range got extended on the troughs is pretty much what we're looking at here in the slot size that went up. So we have a 150 slot on this trough and then we have a 350 on this one. Tech trough still works like a refrigerator when it's powered by, uh, by, by tech generator. So you still get that benefit, but really you're just getting the options to pick it up. It's an extended range. Like this trough, I think is like a 20 foundation and the tech drops like a 35 foundation range. The power node. So you used to seeing these guys on aberration. These guys will actually, can actually be used to make element. You just need all the same resources that you would normally need from a charge node to make them. Um, but you can just make element on the fly when you have that and when you need it. Pretty simple. Uh, going over here, we have the industrial cooker, which is just more efficient and does things quicker. The slot size is a little bit bigger on it but you get all of the, the items here that you can craft so you already know what you need to put in there to make all that stuff. Pretty pretty easy to pretty easy to understand. It's a, it's about the same size, a little bit smaller, but it's about the same size. Um, still needs to be irrigated, but bigger slot size and it does craft things a heck of a lot faster. Going over to the fabricator, 300 slot, obviously a lot smaller. It It's kind of like, uh, I don't know, it's probably about half the size, maybe even more than that of the regular fabricator. Uh, what you're getting is more, it, the noise goes down on these guys, the slot size goes up, and the crafting speed goes up as well. They craft things a little bit faster, but this is where we start getting into the fusion fuel that I talked about. You need this stuff to make the fusion fuel to power a lot of these other tech or high-end stuff, so pay attention to that. Um, what else? So the, again, you can kind of craft things in bulk with the fabricator, like, you know, like your standard resources you can craft, but you can even craft things like element on here too, from crystal electronics and polymer, which is pretty neat. Going over to maybe like your weapons and ammo, you can still do the same thing here. You can just craft bulks of the ammo instead of just ones and twos. It's a little bit easier. Sliding over to the chemistry bench. It's a little bit different than the mortar and pestle for the reason that you actually get a higher stack size. So with the mortar and pestle we got, we could craft one semantic paste or we could craft 20. This increases all these to 50. So you have the option to bump it up to 50. Still gives you everything that a normal um, chemistry station would do, but just gives you the option to craft massive amounts of these things. You just make your life a little bit easier when you're crafting resources, waiting for them to go. Sometimes that can just take forever. Not so much now. All right. So that's pretty much it for here. Uh, the teleporter is really the same. It just means that you can pick it up, which is kind of nice. It's about the same size. It looks like I kind of measured it out. It looks like it's about, and actually now it's a little bit smaller, I think, but, um, the idea is pretty much the same. It still teleports you to other teleporters in the area and you can pick them up. Um, let's start from this end and work our way down through all this stuff. So, uh, the, the CAB allows you to craft artifacts. So you just have to have certain resources. You can actually just craft artifacts here, which is kind of nice. Uh, especially on maps like, um, that don't like Genesis that didn't give you artifacts. But if you're running certain mods that require them, you can just make them. Or if you just want really cool accent lights or you're building and want to do something cool with the artifacts, you can still do that. Or maybe you're an admin on a server and want to run some cool events and use those as trophies. You can do that too. Uh, the tech transmitter is uh, pick up Obviously, it's a little bit smaller. Pretty much does the same thing. It transmits items back and forth between the arc. It's really not that much different. The replicator, obviously, this is a lot smaller, right? So already I like this. It's a 950 slot. Uh, obviously, you still need the uh, fusion fuel or the tech to generator to power it. It makes all the stuff that the tech generator already does, plus some of the PIU stuff as well. And you can do the bulk ammo crafting as well in here. So super easy, super nice one stop shop for that. Coming over to the token converter. This is an interesting one. So pre currently you can't actually move certain things from one server to another, but let's say you had this enabled with CrossArc and you had 
a few different servers and you wanted to be able to move stuff around that you normally couldn't you can do that with this and the trick is is that you would take something like an alpha mosasaur tooth put it in here convert it to a token and that token you can now travel between arcs with so foregoing that restriction you can eliminate that as so long as you're probably running this model multiple servers in order for it to work right but you can do that with some of the tech stuff some of the uh like the halloween not the halloween but some of the event stuff like the coal and the valentine's day artifacts you can do it with the apex um the alpha stuff and some of the trophies that's all there uh scrolling over to the cryo fridge you get a 150 slot on the cryo fridge it does extend the life of everything but essentially you're using this advanced cryo fridge because you can pick it up but really what you want it to pay attention to is the piu cryo pods these guys reduce the cryo sickness cool time and also reach re uh, reduce the time it takes for you to capture something with an actual cryopod. Sliding over here, the PIU element station, it just crafts element. It's pretty straight and simple, right? So you can craft regular element, you can craft element charge, you can craft unstable, you can craft element dust. You can do all that right here without the need to uh, go, go actually um, use a charge station or any of that stuff. It's kind of an end game crafting station. Um, it's super useful to get some of the element and different charts and stuff later on. Boss item converter is a little bit interesting. So essentially you can make items that you would normally need to go fight a boss just with raw metal on here. Um, obviously this mod has configurable ionized so you could change some of this stuff up a little bit if you wanted to, but you can make some of your alpha alpha art of, um, your alpha rewards, the apex rewards, and some of the artifacts you can actually just make those from other things, which is pretty cool. Um, nice if you're Sometimes when you're playing on maps, you have a lot of people playing. It's hard to track down certain alphas um, to actually go fight the boss, and this would kind of eliminate that. Uh, the tech force field is what you currently see going on here. It's extended at its maximum range. It's definitely bigger than the normal force field, as we can plainly see, uh, but it's more efficient as far as the element that it burns to try to stay up and stay alert, and then also, obviously, you can pick it up. So it's a bit more fuel efficient, bigger range, and that you can pick it up. That is the majority of what we're going to see out of this mod. Um, the cloning station down here, the tech cloning station, this still works like a normal cloning station. Um, obviously it clones things. Um, you can still pick it up obviously because it's part of this mod. The other cool thing to note about this cloning station, um, it will transfer like imprint bonuses and things like that up. So currently if you try to clone an animal and, uh, it had an imprint bonus when you cloned it it wouldn't get the imprint bonus with this it will so those stats transfer over which is super useful um there's a couple of like equipment based things that we have as well as some stuff in my inventory that we can kind of breeze over uh we have the blood extractor so if you use the piu blood extractor you can make these blood packs that are either good for you to restore some of your health or for dinos to restore their health so you can make kind of health potions for them uh, the fish basket increases the transport time of the fish when they're in the basket so you just get a longer time to move them around the gas collector doesn't take any damage um, so you don't have to worry about that and it collects gas quicker the gliding suit has a tighter turning reduced camera and as you notice when you hover over the piu stuff in green it tells you the difference between that and the vanilla counterpart so you get uh you get basically a more quick more better handle than glider suit the grappling hook just increases its range faster deployment you can reel it in faster and it's definitely lighter doesn't weigh as much because these are 20 that are weighing 10 right now uh, the motorboat, both the motorboat and the raft basically work like their counterpart, but the op with the exception that they're just faster, they handle better and you get a better camera angle with them too. Um, the one thing to note with the regular raft is you get a reverse option too. Uh, the oil vein will um, basically just increase your oil production. It's just faster. That's all it is. Same thing with the tree, tree tap. It just does, it just gathers sap for you quicker. Uh, the water well, same thing. You get an increased water storage with the water well. That is one thing to note with that guy though. Uh, the wind turbine is an interesting one. Oftentimes you're trying to use the wind turbine in maps where the wind isn't really with you so it only works sometimes and you oftentimes throw your hands up in the air and just say you know what i'm just gonna hug a generator up you don't need 100 uh, wind for these things to work all the time when you use the piu ones i haven't tested it thoroughly but in most cases i have yet to actually have to put a generator up using this wind turbine it's pretty nice um some of the stuff that's in my inventory let's go over the spyglass first let me find something down here to look at I think there was raptors down here. Yeah. So the spyglass, you actually get um, the health, torpor, level, and uh, and gender of the animal. Well, you probably get the gender already. But anyhow, you get the health and the torpor rating of them. And then you get a, a zoom as well with them, which is pretty nice. Super useful. Um, the mining laser. 
PIU mining laser um, will increase the weight. You can carry even more and will gather things quicker and the durability does not go down as fast. Uh, the PIU tent increases the hypo, uh, increases the insulation that it gives you and then it also extends the lifetime of it as well. Uh, the PIU scissors are reusable and they'll last forever. Well, not forever, but they'll last a heck of a lot longer than the normal scissors will. It always frustrated me with the current scissors is that you would use them like three times and they would break, which is kind of crazy to me. Uh, then maybe they're in cahoots with the scissor companies. I have no idea. Anywho, you make this guy once and you're pretty much set. That is pretty much it. That's a lot to take in. This mod's pretty good. And I, man, I was really trying to go over this to make this video super long, but <laughs> I tried not to make these mod reviews too long, but it felt like there was a lot of stuff for us to go over. So I kind of had to really just talk really fast to go over it. Anywho. Hey here guys, that's the pick it up mod. Highly recommend this one for a quality of life, whether you're playing PvP or PvE. I think it's really good for a lot of different reasons, um, especially kind of caters to all the different maps too. Highly, highly recommend checking this one out. I'm really grateful that somebody posted this one in the comments because I had not seen it and now I really want to use it. But if you liked the video, hit that like button, hit that sub button, hit that notification bell. We will have a link to the mod in the Steam Workshop or the Steam Workshop page in the description of the video so you guys can check that out as well. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you on the next one.